today we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of learning a language online and I'm going to give you tips so that you can succeed in learning any language simply online. That's right. Hi, my name is Rochelle DeMeo from Beltier Academy. So in a recent interview that I did for Le Mike Francophone, a French magazine, I was sharing some of the good things and bad things about this virtual learning. So let's look at some of the cons first. I kind of like to get the bad news first and then share some good news. So one of the first things is that you don't really have that sense of community in the classroom as much because you don't necessarily get to share a book with like another student or do different activities. So that's kind of a con, right? Another thing is that you not necessarily have to be accountable. So you're not somebody that's going to come up in your face and say, hey, you missed class on Tuesday. You're not necessarily going to find that as much in a virtual classroom. And especially right now where there's so much stuff on a screen, whether you're working from home online or just constantly in front of a screen, sometimes you can be more distracted if you're also taking an online class to learn a language, right? In an online class, sometimes you're not as motivated. You really need to be self-motivated to learn a language, so that can be a challenge as well. And kind of going hand in hand with that, it's more easy to lose that habit of going to class and making it a habit sometimes when it's online. And finally, another con is sometimes there are internet problems. Sometimes you just can't log on. So those are kind of some cons. Now let's look at some pros. The first thing is the flexibility. This is what I was sharing for that interview with the French magazine I was telling you about, is there's so much flexibility at being able to pick when you take a class, when you log on, so it's very convenient to you. You also get to pick where. You could be learning from the convenience of your home, in an office, at a cafe, in a park. You get to pick all of that. You also have the comfort of being able to be in PJs, right? That's pretty cool. And for some personalities, it's actually really nice because they may be shy in class. I've seen this in my experience teaching at different colleges where I taught both online and on campus. And some personalities, they really thrived in an online setting because they, didn't, they weren't as shy online as they were in class. And also there's so many good and actually great learning platforms that exist that are so convenient that have all these different options. For instance, at Beltier Academy, um, students are sent reminders to tell them where they last left off in their class. It's convenient, they know where everything is. It is just really convenient. Another great thing about learning online is that there's just so many great, great, great tools. For instance, you have videos, you have audios, you have different handouts you can print out, um, you can get immediate feedback for an assignment, uh, you get to be part of a discussion group, you're different groups of students, and especially with videos or with like a, in terms of like a traditional classroom, you can put them on pause, you can rewatch them, you can go back to them. And that brings me to my next point, which is that you can review anything that you wish to review in a class that's online. You can just go back to that section of it. So that makes it so convenient to really master a language by being able to go back to it. Like for French, I tell my students, make sure that you learn the helping verbs, auxiliary verbs, être and avoir, to be and to have, in the present tense. Because when we learn the past tense, that's what you're gonna need to know. So make sure you memorize them early on. My students that don't always listen to that little piece of advice I share early on, they, can easily go back and start learning it. So that's the cool thing is that there are a lot of options to review it. So that really does make it convenient. And the last point, and especially with what's going on right now and the situation in which we are living in, all of us, is that you don't have to wear a mask. So a lot of teachers that are teaching in a classroom, they have to wear a mask. And to learn a language that's so challenging because you can't see how the lips are formed, where the tongue placement is, there's just so much stuff that you can't see. And even like a lot of them don't have the ability to wear those like see-through uh, masks or it's kind of glaring. So it's, it's convenient, convenient. With an online class, you don't have that problem. And also there's not that awkwardness because when a student asks you something, they're looking at your mouth to see how a word is pronounced, for instance, you kind of always have like that, like one length apart, like distance. And they're trying to look at it with an online class. You can show your mouth. So that is, easier in a certain way. Now let me give you 18 different things that are going to help you successfully learn a language entirely online. 
The first thing is you want to write your goals. Writing your goals is so important because it's going to keep you motivated long term. You might just start out writing a few in a notebook that you keep handy and then review them, reassess those goals. You may add some. That's what I did for Italian. At first I was like, hey, my dad has some Italian background. My dad is Italian, American Italian. And I was like, well, that's already one reason. Second, who doesn't love Italy? I love going to Italy. If I can communicate in Italian with them, I'm going to experience so much more of the culture. So I just, and it's such a gorgeous language. So I started writing all that down. That's what you want to do. Second thing is that you really want to schedule your online class by actually physically writing it in a calendar, whether it's online or on paper. You want to write out when you are going to class. And to do that, you need to set yourself reminders that are going to indicate when you actually do the online class. I recommend 10 to 30 minutes per day, five to six days a week. If you can, that would be great. That's my dog scratching himself a little bit. And though you crack me up anyway. So another thing is that you obviously want to find a good instructor based on these factors. This may help you make sure the person's native. That would be ideal because with pronunciation, accentuation, getting a proper accent, that's going to help. But also somebody that really keeps up with the language, especially if they're an expat, it's important that they know of the newer words, expressions, slang that, or adopted in everyday language. I think it's so important for that instructor to be passionate about the language and the culture. And knowing obviously the subject is extremely important, but the instructor knows needs to know how to teach. Somebody could be a university professor with a science degree, but just not know how to teach. And that's not going to help you and certainly will not motivate you. So definitely consider those different things. And then, you want to see that that person has good student testimonials. If they have other students that can vouch and say, wow, I learned such and such a language. Like I learned Spanish through Margarita. She was amazing. Something like that, that it would be just really good testimonials. And obviously if it's an online class, you want to make sure that they know how to use technology. So another piece of advice is when you do sign up for an online class, make sure that you schedule it. You need to write it down in your agenda and make sure that you're getting sent reminders. Ideally, I mentioned 30, 10 to 30 minutes, five times, six times a week would be good. But even if it's just twice a week, just make sure that you jot it down and that you have reminders. And the same goes for like a live class. Like we have um, live classes that are taught in real time by native professors at Belter Academy. And it's the same principle. You want to jot down when those live classes are being held. And then during class, you want to take notes, regardless of what type of learner you are or what your personality is like, you really will benefit from taking notes during class. And that's going to help you have less screen time so that while the class is being taught, you're less on the screen. You can also buy those glasses that are anti blue screen glasses. I've mentioned in another video, but, um, you want to take notes and ask questions. And then if you can review the very same day, if you're able to, it's so important to be able to just take 10 minutes, reread your notes, go back and look at some of the content from class, but review the same day and something a good instructor, a good instructor should provide you with are resources to keep you completely submerged with a language outside of class. So recommendations for movies, podcasts, different articles that you can read, newspapers, just to really completely be entirely submerged in the language constantly. And that's what we do at Belter Academy with our private group. We daily just send them, whether it's games or expressions of the day, the recipe of the day, so that they're constantly submerged with the French language so that they really can learn it and advance in it quickly. Another thing that's important is to have an accountability partner. So somebody from class that you can text in the language that is going to help motivate you and keep you motivated so you can keep progressing in the language. And something that we also do, and I've seen this to be so efficient, but at Belter Academy, we always recommend that students either join or form a study group. So different people that you can review things with, but also do fun things like for instance, you could do it online. You all follow a recipe. Everybody watches a movie online, but then they discuss it. They do like, you know, a zoom and discuss it. That's so much fun. And then having a pen pal or pen pals 
that are natives that you can communicate with in the language is so useful. Again, we provide all this at Belter Academy, as you know, as a student, but um, it's just useful to have a pen pal that you can ha exchange with. And then assisting events. It could be physical events you physically or assist or virtual events, but it could be different festivals or something that's an event that's organized locally. But you want to assist as much as you can and then try to create friendships at these events or through your pen pal uh, that with people that are natives that you can just constantly communicate in that language with. And there's just so many events out there that you could easily find something. And play games in the language. Just something that's fun where you're using the language. That's another awesome thing that you can do. And even if right now, I know traveling is a little bit challenging, you know, right now, but you can still explore through Google Earth. You just get to know different, the country or different countries where the language is spoken. We do that in class. It's so much fun. Like, hey, this is where Algeria is. Let's look at the capital. Let's look at this. And it's just, it's a great way to learn geography. And you can do that virtually. Yes. And then having different post-its, whether they're like physical post-its or virtual post-its where you're just learning new vocabulary, you're just reviewing, that is so incredibly useful. And something that I mentioned to my students oh, quite frequently is to have a little repertoire, it's a little like alphabetical notebook, where you look up words that pertain to your personal and professional life and you learn those by writing them down in this, you know, kind of like your own little personalized dictionary. So that's extremely useful. And then right before going to bed, try to do something for about 10 minutes in that language, whether you're reading something, I read my Bible in Italian, for instance, at night, but, or you're listening to something and then try to think about it as you're falling asleep in that language. And then when you start dreaming in the language, that's a good sign. That means that you're really starting to learn it, master it, and think in it. And that brings me to my very last point, which is you want to train your brain to think in that language. And that's truly a mental exercise. And I mentioned it very briefly for that article that I was interviewed for, for that French magazine, but it is a mental exercise. So, you can do it. You can learn a language entirely online. See you soon, friends.